back to my channel, Tammy Talks here. Let's go ahead and get into Sisters Season 3, Episode 22 of Women's Work. So if you enjoyed the video tonight, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up the video, so you don't miss any of my future videos and happen to the comment section. Let's talk about this episode, y'all. So it starts off with Hayden. It starts off where it left off with Hayden coming into Zach's house and calling him out for insider trading. You know, Hayden has a heart on, and he, while he doesn't have any proof, he is assuming that because Zach hit big on the t on the stock, that it must be insider trading. So Hayden tells Zach um, that he'll give him an ultimatum, that if he promises to leave Fatima alone, then he'll stop harassing him and trying to figure out how he got the money for the stock and... You know, he won't go to jail and the feds and all this other stuff. So then we have this macho bravado scene where Zach is um, telling Hayden, you know, he rather, you know, with him and Fatima has this real, he would rather go to jail than, you know, he would rather, he would rather go to jail than risk giving, you know, in his relationship with her. He then tells Hayden that, uh, Fatima would rather take that long drive upstate to go see him rather than actually like messing with messing with Hayden. So it's like Hayden, I don't know. The whole Hayden storyline to me has really been annoying, to be real with y'all. It has been so annoying to me. I hate every scene that he's in. I hate how the actor like never makes eye contact with anyone else. I'm sure that's on purpose, but I feel like he's always just yeah, I hate you, Zach, and I, like, he's never, like, looking at them, so the entire thing is annoying, so Hayden just kind of tells him, you know, watch your back, womp, 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 Zach tells him that, um, since he's going to jail anyways, he doesn't mind adding murder to his rap, and I'm like, this is, this is annoying, this is a macho bravado scene that really doesn't need to happen, but here we are. So then the next thing we have is the, um, the girls are at the strip club. So Sabrina gets pulled on stage by Fuego, one of the dancers. Um, and she's awkward and it's typical Sabrina, very true to her character, where she looks scared and all this other stuff. So Andy apologizes to Karen. Tells Karen that she's sorry that she hurt her. And, you know, all this other type of stuff. And Karen kind of, like, just stares at her. And here's my thing with Karen. Girl, if you didn't want to be there, you didn't have to come. So it really, really got on my no nerves how Karen sat there with an attitude the entire time. Like, they were all trying to cheers and all this other stuff. And she's sitting there, I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. Granted, if somebody said they don't want to drink that night, they don't want to drink that night. It shouldn't be this big of an issue, but it became this big issue. So Karen just had like negative, like super, super, super negative energy about her, around her, all that type of stuff. So Karen then tells Andy that she wants her to invite Fatima. And everybody was like, Fatima, who? Who's Fatima? And Andy was like, I am not inviting Fatima. So then Karen, like, gets up and goes to the bathroom. And Danny was like, what, are you really going to call her? And Andy's like, I'm not crazy. She keeps a gun on her. Fatima keeps a gun on her. Like, I'm not trying to involve myself in this drama. Like, this is stupid at this point. Um, I understand if, if... I do understand if Karen doesn't want to tell her friends that she's pregnant just yet. But, like, girl, if you're going to have this negative energy around you and have this attitude, then you need to go home. You need to go home because you're getting on everybody's nerves, mainly mine. <laughs> so, Fuego comes over, and he is saying how he is always like Danny. Um, but Danny wasn't messing with him because he was a bigger guy back then. Danny said, I was big, too. And he said, I know. That's why I thought we would bond. I said, not because y'all both big. Come on, Fuego. <laughs> I don't know why, but I cackled at that. Just because somebody is big does not mean they have to be with somebody else that is big. But according to Fuego, that is a bonding moment. So that was hilarious to me. So we see, we switch over to Zach and Fatima. Zach gets over to Fatima's house or home to Fatima's house. And he tells her that he needs to talk to her and that he was just with Fatima. He was just with Karen 
and she took a pregnancy test. And she's asking him, like, is it yours? Is it Aaron's? He said it's his because she hasn't been messing with Aaron for that long. She's going to go to the doctor next week for confirmation. Um, if a team asks if she's keeping it, and Zach was like, the way that she's talking, yeah. He's like, then on top of that, like, you don't have to worry about anything. I got this. But Tima was like, no, this this is a situation I'm, I'm going to be worried about. This is definitely a situation. So he then tells Fatima, I got something else to tell you. And she is pouring, like, she filled her wine glass up to the brim, y'all. And he tells Fatima that he, about how he got the money. And she was, he was like, I got the money because I was doing um, working at the airport, this lady gave me a tip and told me about a stock. And Fatima was like, that's not insider trading. He was like, but this tip came from her husband who was a senator. So she was like, how do you know that Hayden knows? And Zach, or how does Hayden know? And Zach was like, I don't know. I don't know how he found out. He said he's connected. He knows people, whatever, whatever. So Fatima was like, don't worry about Hayden. I will handle Hayden. Like, don't even, don't even trip about that. I didn't even know I didn't have everything. And she's like, don't trip about that. I will handle Hayden. Uh, don't worry about that. And then Fatima starts laughing. Like, out of nowhere, just randomly starts laughing. And Zach was like, this is not funny. Fatima was like, it is funny. But, you know, this is life. This is life. We just have to roll with it. We have to take life as it is. We'll figure this out. Like, Fatima is really down for Zach. Like, really, really down for Zach. So, we switch back to the strip club. And Andy is telling, um, Andy is texting. And they keep asking her, who are you texting? And she was like, somebody. Karen's hating ass. Aggie ass is like, oh, well, I'm sure Gary won't like that. And Andy said, well, actually, we broke up. We broke up. And they are just kind of looking like, mm. so Andy says she's getting ready to go home, right? And so um, Karen says she's getting ready to go too, even though she said she was going to be their designated driver. And Danny was like, we're not ready to go just yet. So everybody is like, yeah, it's fine. We can go. Fuego wraps back, um, walks back around and asks Danny, because everyone has left, to go get a drink. She's like, why can't we get a drink here? And he was like, because we're closing. So she is like, go get a drink. She's being awkward and stuff. My thing is, don't y'all know each other from college? So why is it so awkward? Like, I don't I don't quite understand the the overly the overly awkwardness that Tyler is having go on in this scene. So Andy gets to Robin's hotel room. And they're sitting down and they're talking, and she, Robin tells Andy that he owns the whole company. So the entire law firm is his, and she's like, what? She's like, so why would you, if you own it, like, why would you take a divorce case? And he said that he took the case because he really wanted to meet her. So he said he didn't tell her, though, because he didn't want her to look at him differently. You know, people start to act funny when they find out how much money you have or status or anything like that. So that's why he didn't tell her. So they eventually head over to the bed. Fuego and Danny um, get back to Danny's apartment. And he's been very persistent. He's like, well, let me stay and hang out. And she's like, mm, nope, you're good. And he just keeps saying, oh, no, let me stay and hang out. And she's like, no, because she has a situation. She has a boyfriend. She has a president who she has been complaining about the entire episode because he still has not texted her. Even though her friends are like, girl, why don't you just text him? He still hasn't texted her. So she, um, she kind of feels a way about that still. So he is like, well, no one has to know what goes on between my mouth and your lips. I mean, between my mouth and your legs. I said, what? It came across very rhymes with 8B to me. But I I was like, this is a lot. So he tells her that he's going to dance for her. If she's not turned on, then he'll leave. She's like, no, the problem is you do turn me on. So they start to do this very cringy scene that was supposed to be sexy, but didn't quite work. And I think it was because of the way that they had the, the camera shooting the video. But they decide to do this dance, and he's dancing on her on the wall. So we switch over to the bank. 
the next morning, Sabrina walks in and asks Maurice, did Q show up? And Maurice is like, no, he wasn't at the precinct, but he was at my house. And Sabrina was like, what did he steal? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. What did he take? But Maurice is like, no, nothing. He turned himself in. Um, he's in jail right now. You don't have to worry about that. And then Maurice starts saying how, you know, he has issues, he has problems. And you can tell that he, like, has a very soft spot for Q. He wants to help Q, all this other stuff. And Sabrina is like, he does, you know, have issues, but he's not your father. And me and Maurice was like, my father? So Sabrina then was just like, I talked to your mother when you were in the hospital. And he's like, oh, I guess my mom said, you know, that's what I get for my lifestyle, whatever, whatever. Sabrina at first lies, and he's like, don't lie, just be honest about it. So then Sabrina says, I did some research on your father. Found out that he was on drugs and thinks that Maurice is trying to help Q because he's like projecting those feelings and whatever was going on with his father onto him. And I was like, Sabrina, girl, ma'am, you are doing a lot for no reason. I felt like she truly, truly overstepped her bounds by one, researching this man's father, and then two, having the audacity to throw it in his face. Ridiculous. So he tells her to mind her effing business, and I didn't blame him. On one hand, Maurice, though, you be in everybody's business, but on the other hand, Sabrina, you handled, not only did you handle that wrong, but it came out very, very wrong. So um, we see Fatima is waking up the next, or getting ready to leave the house the next morning to go to work. Robin calls her and tells her that he and Andy met for breakfast and that she'll be late to the off. She'll be coming in later to the office. Fatima ain't stupid. She was like, okay, so they fucked last night, right? So then Zach comes in and Fatima tells him, don't worry about Hayden. I'm going to handle that today. And Hayden, um, Zach is like, I'm worried. You know, he's worried about his house. He just bought this house. He don't want to lose it. He's just now getting to a place where... He's more confident about himself. He has money. He's trying to live on the up and up. No matter how he found out um, about the money, he's like, how he found out about the stock, like Zach is trying to turn his life over, but Zach also has two strikes. So he has to be very, very, very careful with what he does and how he handles everything. So Fatima's like, trust me, don't worry about it. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, she about to go kill him because, you know, Fatima, Fatima keep that strap on her. So I was like, she's about to go kill <laughs> Hayden. So Maurice and Sabrina, um, we get another scene with them at the bank. They apologize to each other. She apologizes for doing what she, you know, the research about her father, about his father, how she like presented it to him. He apologized for snapping at her. He then tells her that he remembers being young and watching a movie with his father or getting ready to watch a movie with his father. And his father left the house, um, or his father left and went to go get high in the bathroom, I think he said. And he sat and watched that movie over and over and over and over. So he finally had to call his mom to come pick him up. And he didn't see his father for a very long time after that. And then on one Easter... He was hanging out at his dad's house. They were going to dye eggs, you know, do all the Easter stuff. And his father told him he was going to go downstairs. And his father was down there for a really long time. And by the time Maurice went down there to check on him, like, kind of like, was good, his father had hung himself. And Maurice said that he tried to get him down, but it was too late. His father had passed away. So because of that, he knew that he had to be a super, super strong person. So in order to do that, he, um... Mass everything, excuse me, mass everything with a joke. So he covers up everything with a joke. He makes light out of everything. He doesn't take anything too serious. And that just goes back to him trying to push all that trauma that he went through as a child deeper in. Um, and that's typical Tyler Perry where he has to have somebody have a super, super dramatic, effed up childhood in order to, um, in order to try to make sense of the reason why there's such a overly annoying or 
loud, in-your-face type of person. So then we have Danny and Fuego. The next morning, they're, um, Danny's coming out, ready and dressed for work. Fuego is in bed, so he clearly stayed the night. They clearly did the do. And Danny is, like, rushing him out, telling him he has to get dressed, get on out, because she has to go to work. He's like, I usually sleep until 3. She's like, well, you can go home and do that until 3. So as she is rushing him out the door, um, Preston is knocking on the door and coming in. <sighs> Danny makes it super obvious. Is it raining? Danny makes it super obvious by yelling out, damn, when she should have just been like, this is my boy from college. He stopped by, we hung out, he fell asleep. There was anything that she could have said to try to cover up for that, but whatever. So then we have Rebecca, uh, Robin, and Andy. They're waking up the next morning. Andy jokes awake. She's like, oh shit, I'm late. I gotta get to work. I got things to do. Um, he's like, don't trip. I called Fatima. Told her you were going to be late. And she's like, no, she's going to think we were together. And he's like, no, it's fine. And he's like, I got to go home, get get dressed, get clothes, whatever. He tells her, I already caught the, the store across the street. I had some clothes sent up for you. Don't worry about it. Like, girl, it's fine. So she's like, can you do that? No, not going to do it. He tells her, relax. We still have about an hour or so. Didn't you, didn't you enjoy what happened last night? And she was like, yeah, what does that have to do with anything? I still have to go. Robin says, we would like to do it again. And she was like, who was we? And I was looking like, oh, did they have a threesome? And she don't remember? Girl, Gary walks into the hotel room. And I'm like... Now, Andy, were you that Andy wasn't that drunk that she doesn't remember Gary being there. Is this somebody that Gary hired... Or, like, put up to to try to trap her? I am so sick and tired of the Gary storyline. I am so sick and tired of the Gary storyline. I promise you, I think it is the dumbest thing ever. How long are we going to go through this circle before he eventually kills her because KJ is going over to power? <laughs> How long? So then find the final scene is Fatima and Hayden. So Fatima, we see Hayden going and getting in his car. He's in his bins. He is parked next to a black van. Um, we don't pay any attention to it. We see Fatima walk over, get in the car. Hayden is like, what are you doing in my car? And she's like, I don't know why you won't stop messing with Zach. And she was like, so I know it's insider trading. And she was like, how do you know that? And he was like, I don't, but... I, I'm going to find out. And she's like, I keep telling you to leave him alone. I see you're not going to stop. I keep asking you nicely. You're not going to stop. Um, I see you're not scared of me telling the partners that you've been listening to my phone calls. And Hayden is being very smug and just like, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to keep it going. And then Fatima is like, okay, cool. So she puts on some brass knuckles. And Hayden was like, you got some brass knuckles. And she punches the shit out of him and his nose. <laughs> it was one of them punches that his head jerked back and everything. So she starts punching him. They're tussling back and forth. And then he um he actually punches her back. And she was like, you hit me. Okay, cool. She whistles and two men jump out of that van and they come in and they get in there and they commence to whooping Hayden's ass. Um, is Hayden going to die? I don't know. But I, that's what Hayden deserves. Hayden has been so annoying about this. Like, this woman doesn't want you. You're so mad that you think that Zach is beneath you because he's an ex-con. He doesn't have as much money as you. He's not a lawyer like you. So Hayden views Zach as lesser than, than him. So in his mind, yeah, let me go ahead and... F this guy up or go ahead and mess up his life. Like, it's not even on some, I want Fatima back. It's really, if I can't have her, you can't either type situation. So let me know what you guys think is going to happen in season four. Um, why was Gary there? Do you guys think that Hayden is dead? Do, what do you think is going to happen with Preston and um, 
Danny, like, is Sabrina going to really stay with Calvin? Because you can't be popping pills and popping volume just to deal with the fact that your your boyfriend likes things sexually that you can't get behind. So let's talk about it down below. If you have not already, don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in the next one.